Hey guys, I'm Eric with AeroGuard Flight Training Center, and today we're going to talk about the pitot-static system. Specifically, I want to dive into a, a few different elements. So the first thing we're going to start with is what are these two air sources and what makes them different. The next is which flight instruments use the pitot-static system, and finally, we'll look at some different designs that we find in our airplanes and figure out which design you have in your airplane. So stick around and hopefully by the end of this we'll learn something about the pitot-static system. So I've got some information on the board here and let's start with our first question. We want to talk a little bit about the difference between the static air and this pitot air. So to start with, we'll, we'll start with the static air. And this is really representing the ambient air around us. Why is that important? Well, that's important because the air around us changes as we change altitude. This is very similar to another fluid like water. If you've ever dive, dove into the, the deep end of a pool or gone diving in the ocean or a lake, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure that you generally feel in your ears. That works the same way with air. Uh, as we go to higher and higher altitudes, the air pressure becomes less and less, and the closer we get to the surface, the greater that pressure is. Now, that pressure changes at a relatively consistent rate, at least at lower altitudes. So this helps us in uh, ultimately being able to calculate our altitude. So the static air, uh, typically follows what is known as a lapse rate. And so this lapse rate uh, is measured at approximately one inch of mercury per thousand feet. So to kind of put that into perspective, if we had a barometer that would measure pressure and we left it at sea level, the standard sea level pressure is uh, 29.92 inches of mercury. If we then climbed a ladder or climbed an altitude by a thousand feet, we would see that that pressure would be relatively close to 28.92 inches of mercury, and so on, right? So this is valuable information as we could have a device that would be able to then calculate our change in altitude or, or to know what our altitude would be. Our pitot air is also sometimes referred to as our ram air, and this is uh, more or less uh, comprised of, of two main components. So if you imagine if you were driving down the highway and you stick your hand out the window, you feel a bunch of air pressure pushing on your hands. So most of that pressure that you're feeling is what we call the relative wind or uh, your speed. And the other bit would still be the static air that you are in. So Really, the pitot air, or this ram air, can be described as a combination of the static air pressure that you're in, coupled with the velocity, or the, the speed pressure that's, that's created by this relative wind. And this obviously would be very helpful to us in determining what our airspeed would be as we fly through an air mass. Now we'll move on to question number two, which instruments use the pitot-static system? So uh, there's three flight instruments that ultimately use this pitot-static system, the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. So starting from the airspeed indicator, we see here that I've kind of illustrated that the airspeed indicator uses both the pitot source and the static source. Why would that be the case? Well, the answer, if we go back to our first question, was that the pitot air by itself, right, is comprised of both our speed, but also the pressure from the ambient static air. So what that means then is we want to be able to, to sort of remove the static air component from that uh, equation. So they ultimately just compare the pitot source to the static source, and that way it's only indicating our uh, velocity. The altimeter um, only utilizes the static source, and this is because, once again, based on this lapse rate, we have uh, identified increments of, of where pressures should be at, and therefore uh, the altimeter is just set up so that it would interpret those static air pressures and then depict the appropriate altitude. 
finally, we have the vertical speed indicator. And the vertical speed indicator is simply going to use the static source to measure our rate of change uh, in static pressure, right? So if, if the pressure is going down quickly, then we know that we're climbing rapidly. Opposite of that would be if we were uh, descending quickly, we would s the, the, the vertical speed indicator would sense that the pressure was continuing to increase uh, over time. And therefore, it can indicate uh, whether we are climbing or descending. All right, now on to our last question about how the pitot-static system is designed, maybe in your particular airplane. Uh, in my experience, there's really two different designs you're going to find across pretty much all airplanes. Uh, the more standard design that we typically see is on the outside of the airplane, there will be a, what's called a pitot tube, uh, either hanging below a wing or sometimes uh, mounted on the side of the airplane uh, or on the nose and then a static port which will usually be sort of flush mounted uh, along the edge of the fuselage or uh, the empennage of the airplane and those air sources then go into the cockpit and connect to the various flight instruments as you see here I have it arranged as the airspeed indicator, uh, the altimeter, the vertical speed indicator, and in this case, uh, in, in most examples, uh, we'll see that the mode C encoder for the transponder also has a static source so that it can uh, determine the altitude that we're at and send that information along uh, to any transponder uh, requests. In this example, I kind of drew this arrow to identify the direction of flight. So what that means then is if we're flying this direction, then the relative wind would be forcing this air pressure into this pitot tube. The other design that we see, and specifically here at AeroGuard where we fly all Piper aircraft, is in a design slightly modified. Basically, the, the difference is instead of having a separate pitot tube uh, from this static port, it's all combined into one unit uh, that hangs below the wing called a pitot mast. And so on the leading edge of this pitot mast, right, once again, direction of flight, we see that there would be an opening and that would represent our pitot source or this ram air source. And then on the trailing edge, on the back side of this pitot mast, there is the static port, which su would supply static pressure to the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, the vertical speed indicator, and once again, uh, the mode C encoder for the transponder. So I hope that this helped clarify any questions you may have had about the pitot static system. Continue to watch. We're going to have more videos uh, in reference to how each of the flight instruments work as well. And hopefully that will uh, that'll just move you forward in your knowledge. Uh, thanks again for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will continue to produce more and more content for you. Thanks. Have a good day.